Custom number format conditions allow you to specify a different format based on the size of a number. In this tutorial, we'll look at the different ways we can use them, including some fun with emojis and a more serious application with a pivot chart that automatically applies different number scaling to suit the data resulting from selections in a slicer, as you can see here. OK, let's take a look. We'll start by making these student test scores a bit more fun. Now scores over 80 will get the clap emoji, scores over 50 will get the OK emoji, and the remaining scores, that is those 50 and under, will get the thumbs down. Now I've got the scores repeated here in column D, and it's these ones I'm going to apply the custom number format to. First, I need to get the emojis and put them in an empty cell, and I can use the keyboard shortcut windows and the semicolon to open the emoji pane. All I need to do is single left click to insert the emojis. So I need the clap, the OK sign, and the thumbs down. Now if you don't see the emoji that you want, you can just start typing in what it's called and it will filter the list for you. Obviously I don't need any more emojis, but while we're here, let's take a quick look at this window. You've got your favorites, although I've never used half of these, so there must be someone else's favorites. You've got smiley faces, people and so on, the usual ones you get on your phone. And then we have K emojis and symbols. So some useful things in there. All right, I'll close that window and all I need to do now is copy the emojis to my clipboard. So with the cell in edit mode, I'm going to highlight the emojis in the cell and control C to copy. And then you can see when I press enter, it commits the emojis to the cell and they slightly change their format but they don't have any color. And that's one of the limitations of the Excel app on your desktop in that it doesn't show the emojis in color. They're only available in grayscale. However, in Excel Online, they're in their full color glory. So they do transfer to Excel Online much better. And while you can't create custom number formats in Excel Online, they are available for use once you set them up in the workbook. So if I control one to open the formatting, go to custom, scroll to the bottom, you can see there are the custom number formats and I can use them in this file in Excel online and apply them in other cells if I want to. I just can't create them from scratch in here. So I'm using Excel on the desktop so we have to put up with the grayscale emojis for now. So I've copied the emojis to my clipboard. I need to highlight the cells I want to format. Control 1 to open the formatting pane. On the number tab we want the custom category. And in the type field, I'm going to control V to paste in the emojis that I copied and we'll just create the conditions around them. Now the conditions are entered inside square brackets. So I'll open the first one and we want scores greater than 80 to have the clapping hands and the emoji needs to also be wrapped in double quotes. I'm sorry, this window is tiny. So I'll zoom in on this so you can see it a bit better. And then each condition is separated by a semicolon. So the next condition is for scores greater than 50, we're going to give them the OK sign and again wrap it in double quotes. And then for all of the remaining scores, that is for scores 50 and below, we're going to just give them the thumbs down. Not good enough. Now notice the order of my conditions is the largest scores first, then the next largest. And we do this because Excel will stop evaluating the conditions once it meets the criteria. And the other thing to note is we can only specify two criteria and then the final emoji is applied to the remaining scores. So I'll click OK. Now we can use the font tools to increase the size of the emojis. Unfortunately, I can't do much about the color. So I don't need this cell with the emojis here. So I'm just going to delete that and we're done. All right, let's look at another example. Here I've got weather temperatures. In Australia, we use degrees Celsius, so I'm going to be formatting these values. But this is the equivalent in Fahrenheit, if that's more familiar to you. So remember, we need an empty cell and then Windows key semicolon to bring up the emoji list. I want to go to my favorites tab because I've got them already here. So I want the hot face, the cool face with the sunglasses and the cold face. Close the window. Control C to copy them. Now notice 
I'm highlighting the emojis in the active cell. You can't copy the cell itself. You need to copy the content. So either in the cell or in the formula bar, control C to copy, then select the cells you want to format, control one to open the format pane. In custom, I'm just going to control V to paste in the emojis. Here I want temperatures that are over 30 degrees to have the hot face. We need to wrap it in double quotes and then semicolon. And then the next one is temperatures over 20. They're going to have the cool sunglasses face. And then for all other temperatures, that is 20 and below, we're going to have the cold face. Now, I know many of you will think that below 20 is not that cold, but I live in the subtropics and to us below 20 is absolutely freezing. So I'll click OK and there's my emojis. Let's make them a bit bigger. Now notice they're all a bit off center. Let's go back into the format. And the reason for that is because I've added spaces after my criteria. So we'll get rid of that. Now they're all lined up. Another way we can insert emojis is using Excel functions. For example, if you know the hexadecimal code, you can decode it with Excel's hex to deck function and the unicar function, as you can see here. Now you find a complete list of emoji codes on the unicode.org website. In the code column, you just take the code after the U plus. So in the example on the first line here, you just need the one F and then six zero zero. That's the code you input into the hex to deck function in Excel. You can see here the code for the sunglasses face is one F 60 E. Now there's a link to the site in the Excel file, which you can download from the video description. All right, let's take a look at a more serious application of custom number formats. Another way we can use custom number formats is to switch the scaling of numbers. Here I've got some sales data and I've analyzed it in a pivot table and then I've popped that into a pivot chart. You can see as I select the different categories, the size of the numbers is significantly different from one category to the next. And when I'm dealing with big numbers, it's often easier to view them scaled to thousands or millions. But if I scale these numbers to millions, then I'm going to lose these numbers to rounding because these are only hundreds. So a useful tool is to set up a custom number format based on conditions. This question actually came about from Ruby, one of my Excel dashboard course members. I'm going to apply the custom number formatting to the pivot table that feeds through to the chart. I'm going to right click and open the number formatting here. Notice that I'm using the pivot table right click menu number format because this is going to apply the format to the pivot table field rather than just the cells. So if and when my pivot table grows into new cells, I won't need to reapply any formatting. So again, we only have a number tab here. I want custom. And then in here, I'm going to enter my conditional format. So we're going to start with the largest number first. So numbers greater than or equal to 1 million. Close my square bracket. I'm going to format them with the dollar sign. And then we want one decimal place. And then to scale to a million, I need to enter two commas. And then I want to enter an M after the number to indicate that this is millions. The next condition is going to be for values greater than or equal to 1000. Close my square bracket. This format is also going to have one decimal place. I want one comma to scale to thousands and then K to indicate that these values are thousands. And then for everything else, we just want it with the currency symbol. So we'll enter that format, click OK. So you can see the components values are only in the hundreds, so they don't have any scaling. Clothing is thousands, so it's scaled with K. Bikes is also thousands. And then accessories is millions. So I've set one custom number format to this field in the pivot table. But as I change my selection in the slicer, the format is automatically adapting. Now it's important that you don't apply custom number formats where there can be mixed scaling. So for example, if I apply that same format and I don't need to set it up again, I just scroll to the bottom and there's my custom number format. Click OK. 
You can see here I've got millions, thousands and no scaling all in the one pivot table. I don't recommend this because it could slow down interpretation and make the values more difficult to compare. And you never know, someone might make a mistake completely misreading it. So don't use this type of number format where you can end up with mixed results like this. In this example, I'm going to use conditional custom formats to apply different colors based on a scale. For example, let's say here I want to color code values less than 500 in red, then values less than or equal to 1000 in green, and the remaining values in orange. Again, I just need to select the cells to format, Control 1 to open the formatting pane. In custom, we're going to type in our custom number format. So the first color is red, and I need to place that color in square brackets. Then I need to put in my condition, which is values less than 500. Then I need to specify the format. So we're just going to have zero decimal places, semicolon for the next condition. This one's going to be green. Now there is a green in the standard colors and standard colors can be named. Red is the standard color. So all I needed to do is type in red. I could type in green here, but the green is a bit bright and difficult to read. So I'm going to use a different shade of green and I can specify that using its color number, which is 10. So I'll close my square brackets on the color. Then the condition is less than or equal to 1000. Close the condition square brackets. And then I just need my format. So no decimal places. And then all remaining values, I'm going to color in orange and that's color number 46. Close my square brackets. And then the format is again, zero decimal places. Now notice here, I've got the smaller value first, and that's because my criteria are using less than rather than greater than as we had in the previous examples. So just something to keep in mind. So I'll click OK, and there I have my formatted result. Now a couple of things to point out. There are eight standard colors. You can see them listed here. And by standard, I mean when you're creating the custom number formats, you can simply type in the name of the color but there are actually 56 colors in total. You can get a full list and see the colors at David McRitchie's site here. And the link for this site is also in the Excel file for this lesson, which you can download from the link in the video description. You can see there's loads of colors to choose from. And the first column shows the color number, or if it's one of the eight standard colors, you can simply use the name. Now, the other thing to note is if you simply want to format negative values, you don't need to create a condition at all. So control one to open the formatting pane on the number tab. You can choose from these standard formats. Likewise for currency, you can see there are already options for red. And if we go into custom, you can see those same number formats are available here. So you could even take this and modify it and change that to perhaps parentheses for negative values. This is the negative format and this is the positive format. It doesn't need conditions. Excel knows that the first format is for positive values and then the next format after the semicolon is for negative. So here the negative values will be formatted in red. So no need to create a conditional custom number format if you just want to format negative values. I hope you enjoyed this video and found these techniques useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. If you liked it, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.